We explore a powerful case of crime and punishment, still being hotly debated 25 years after the fact. Arnold Friedman and his son Jesse both pled guilty to a horrific series of sexual crimes. The victims, young boys. An Oscar-nominated documentary capturing the Friedmans got millions of Americans debating the case. And in the years since, new evidence has come to light that has many, including a U.S. appellate court, wondering if justice was really done. With witnesses recanting, tonight we're recapturing the Friedmans. Okay, Jess, we're on. Hello, what? I feel like shit. What's today's date? Today is the day before I went to jail. This is Jesse Friedman in a home video 25 years ago. He's 19 and about to go to prison for a series of terrible crimes. Hundreds of pounds of molesting young boys in Great Neck, Long Island. A prominent middle-aged teacher in a prosperous Long Island town is charged with sodomizing young boys who were his students. Are you a child molester, Jess? Nope. Did you ever do it? Never touched the kids. He may be denying it on the way to prison, but along with his father, Jesse Friedman had already pled guilty. He went to prison for 13 years. Hey, how you doing? And this is Jesse Friedman today. We've taken him back to his childhood home. When was the last time you were on this street? 25 and a half years ago. Prosecutors call it the scene of the crime. But he's determined to prove them wrong. Armed with a stunning U.S. Court of Appeals ruling saying that there was a reasonable likelihood Jesse Friedman was wrongfully convicted. And shocking new evidence. Child witnesses now all grown up who say it never happened. I just consciously decided to, to lie. I can tell you as God is my witness and on my two children's lives, I was never raped or sodomized. I was telling myself, just say this to them in order to get them off your back. How could you possibly plead guilty to these crimes if you didn't do them? If you've never been in the position that I was in, then you don't fully understand. Few have ever been in the position Jesse Friedman found himself in 1987. His father, Arnold Friedman, taught an after-school computer class at their home. Jesse was his assistant. Authorities discovered Arnold was purchasing child pornography through the mail. And these are listings of the magazines that were found behind the uh, piano. Young boys and sodomy, incest case histories, something called Chicken Pickens magazine. And in addition to that, we found evidence of a computer class being taught there by Mr. Friedman. I remember walking in there and saying, you know, God damn, I mean, we could have a problem here. Police launched an investigation, questioning the boys in the classes. One by one, dozens of boys said Arnold and sometimes Jesse gave them pornographic video games, fondled them, and even sodomized them. One game was called Leapfrog, described here by one former student. Yeah, Leapfrog. I remember about that. Um, it's kind of like Twister, where we would have to sit down our asses would be in the air. Arnold and Jesse would leap from one person to another, sticking their dick each in our ass. As we conducted more interviews of the children, Jesse's name started to pop up. And then eventually we were able to ascertain that Jesse's role was not one of, you know, helping his dad conduct a computer class, but basically abusing the children himself. Five months into the investigation, Arnold Friedman pled guilty. And endangering the welfare of a child, a class A misdemeanor, one count, in full satisfaction of this indictment? Yes. Not only that, he confided to his wife he had abused boys in the past. We were sitting in the therapist's office, and he said, oh, I just molested two boys. And I said, two, two. I said, I thought you told me only one. All of which made Jesse Friedman's position more complicated. How could he be innocent if the crimes took place right in front of him? The community was up in arms, captured in this chaotic moment at the courthouse. <laughs> and ultimately, a year after the investigation began, Jesse too pled guilty. So we return to the question, why would he have pled guilty if he didn't do it? I was 18 years old, and I was the only person standing up and saying these things never 
happened. My lawyer's position was basically, it doesn't really matter if you're innocent or guilty. There's no way you can win the trial. And he was right. The game was rigged. The fix was in. If this story seems familiar, it may be because it was told in an Oscar-nominated documentary back in 2003, capturing the Freedmans. They're gonna put me in the movies. Film director Andrew Jarecki says he couldn't get the Freedman story out of his head. Over the past decade, as he dug deeper, he began to have more and more doubts about whether justice had been served. People who were part of those computer classes uh, have come forward and said to me, nothing ever happened in those classes. There's no question that these classes were not uh, mass raping sessions. It's impossible that these things took place in the presence of dozens and dozens of witnesses who remember none of it. You were persuaded that Jesse Friedman is not guilty, was never guilty, was completely railroaded into this conviction. I am persuaded of that. Sex acts and witness animal sacrifices. Jarecki says this was a time when other sensational allegations of child abuse, like the infamous McMartin daycare case, would turn out to be unfounded. This case occurred at a time when the country was consumed with a real mass hysteria that's been documented in hundreds of papers. Jarecki believes authorities and Great Neck were swept up in this wave, pushing children to say things that weren't true. For proof, he went back to some of the boys, now adults. Here are what five of them had to say. I, I knew nothing had happened. I wanted to be done with it. I was so tired of rehashing it over and over again, and I didn't think, I kind of gave up hope on ever being able to convince them that nothing had happened. And if I said it, it was not because it happened. It was because someone else put those words in my mouth. They were asking me a lot of questions, trying to get something, and I just, wanted to give them something. I think what they asked me was, did he ever come into close contact with me? And I think I probably told them that he did. I was telling myself that it's not true. It was a nightmare, and it never ended. It's still something I wake up in cold sweats from. Three years ago, at the urging of that appellate court, the Nassau District Attorney's Office began a review of his case. It's on the brink of completion. With his jail time behind him, you may wonder why Jesse cares so much about clearing his name. He says it's partly because of this woman, his wife, Elizabeth. It's hard for us to make new friends because there's always sort of that third date moment where you have to say, you know, this is my deal, this is who we are, this is what we're dealing with. They've been married six years. Do you like it? I do kind of like it. Well, then that's what's important. What they do want is children. But as a convicted sex offender, Jesse cannot be within 2,500 feet of a child. I don't know if I'm going to get to have babies. I don't know what's going to happen. Would you like to have babies? I'd like to have a family. I'd like to have things be normal. But I've accepted that this may go on so long that I may not be able to have my own children. As we end this interview today, Jesse Friedman's been told the I'd DA's report may be released any moment. Here I am again, uh, finally at a place where I'm really certain that I'm going to be declared innocent. Um, yay. Mm. But what is the truth? Jesse Friedman guilty or a victim of a terrible injustice? suffering for his father's sins. When we come back, finally, the moment Jesse has waited for for so long, the prosecutor's report comes out. Three years after the U.S. Court of Appeals urged the Nassau County District Attorney to re-examine Jesse Friedman's conviction, it looks as if the DA is about to reveal the findings. Friedman believes he will finally be exonerated. And on the day he'll get that call, we go back with him for the first time to his family home, the place police say was the scene of the crime. When was the last time you were on this street? 25 and a half years ago, the morning when I left the house to go to court and plead guilty. My life is as good as 
over. Jesse Friedman spent 13 years in prison for sexually abusing 14 young boys. And while he pled guilty at the time, he says it wasn't true. I'm just so sorry it happened. We've asked him back to what prosecutors say is the scene of the crime, the house he grew up in. It looks smaller than it. I remember it? it. Yeah, it kind of feels really small. Is this the room? Yeah. This is the room. We were eager to see if the room seemed large enough for the kind of sex games police and prosecutors say took place here. There would have been three tables. You were packed in here. Here, the chairs would have been back to back. Although there is a bathroom and a small bedroom just off what used to be the classroom, where many of the students said much of the abuse occurred. Though Jesse insists nothing inappropriate ever happened here. How does it feel, Jesse? I mean, this room has defined your life in so many ways. This room has been implanted with an idea that never existed. This is new. Elizabeth has never been to her husband's childhood home or seen this room. This is where a perfectly happy family was destroyed for no reason. But that is certainly not how the Nassau DA sees things. The day we visit the house, the long-anticipated report commissioned by the DA is released. But instead of the exoneration Jesse Friedman had been hoping for, the report is a scathing endorsement of his conviction, including a body blow to the new material film director Jarecki brought forward. The report is coming out. Jesse and his wife get the news from his lawyer over the phone. The report does not exonerate Jesse. Their hope shattered. A few hours later, Jesse and his team get a copy of the 155-page report, which throws out the recantations Andrew Jarecki had sent to the DA. The alleged recantation evidence was found to be either overstated, not reliable, or unable to be substantiated. Not only that, the report claims new evidence of Jesse's guilt. The review team discovered signed and sworn statements from three additional boys who gave detailed accounts of sodomy and sexual abuse committed against them by Jesse Friedman. <laughs> the report also raised questions about Jesse Friedman's state of mind, citing a doctor hired 25 years ago by his own defense lawyer to evaluate him, who noted his psychopathic personality, narcissism, and inability to distinguish right from wrong. Even more troubling, a statement by Jesse's uncle Howard, his father's brother, who told prosecutors that he knew Jesse was guilty. Jesse is guilty, and you're going to ask me how I know, he said, because Arnold told me. The report is filled with nothing but lies. Right, None of which shakes the confidence of Jesse or his team. A case in point, they say, this recent letter from former accuser Kenneth Doe. Kenneth Doe specifically and categorically stated that none of the things attributed to him, none of the complaints, none of the allegations made by him ever happened. You can't say that this was not a recantation. This was the clearest possible recantation. And what of Jesse's uncle's statement, who claims his now dead brother confessed to him and said Jesse, too, was guilty? He is recounting something that allegedly Arnold Friedman, who by all accounts was crazy, <laughs> allegedly said to him, that's not admissible evidence in any courtroom on this planet. The entire case uh, hinged on uh, the testimony or the supposed statements of predominantly eight-year-old kids. There was no physical evidence. There was no medical evidence. Gavin DeBecker is a best-selling author and expert in the area of child exploitation and security. He, too, wrote a report on the case. He says he believes the case was fatally tainted by the way police interviewed the children. When you see the nature of how the interviews were done, you begin to understand that you could get an eight-year-old kid to admit he killed Kennedy. Some of them were visited 15 times by the police. One of them had a seven-hour interview. In adult terms, that would be called abuse or torture. DeBecker says even the district attorney's report acknowledges that police used unprofessional, unfair, and cruel tactics in interviewing the child witnesses, including telling boys that they would become homosexual if they didn't say they were abused, techniques which would not be permitted today. 
but prosecutors are convinced they sent a guilty man to prison, while Jesse Friedman passionately denies that. It's really painful when the district attorney lies about you. He says what he really wants is the day in court he never had, the chance to go to trial and let a jury decide what is justice. Yeah, I have more fight in me than I've ever, ever had before. So, game on. Jesse Friedman's lawyers filed new material with the New York court yesterday. The Nassau County District Attorney declined our repeated requests for an interview.